It's our purpose to bring to bear the principle of common sense and rational discussion to the issues of our day. America was created at a time of great turmoil, tremendous disagreements, anger, hatred. There was a book written in 1776 that guided much of the discipline of thinking that brought us to the discovery of our freedoms, of our God-given freedoms. It was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, written in 1776, one of the first American bestsellers, in which Thomas Paine explained by rational principles the reason why these small colonies felt the necessity to separate from the powerful Kingdom of England and the King of England. He explained their inherent desire for liberty, freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and he explained it in ways that were understandable to the people, to all of the people. A great deal of the reason for America's constant ability to self-improve is because we are able to reason, we're able to talk to each other, we're able to listen to each other, and we're able to analyze. We are able to apply our God-given common sense. So let's do it. Welcome back to Rudy's Common Sense. Today's episode is with a very unusual man, a man who's taking on two or three missions that would take a lifetime for each one of them, but a man that's very dedicated, very talented, brings a tremendous perspective to each one of these problems, and an awareness that we need here in the United States. Jack O'Boyens, I'm sure you know who he is, but now we're going to find out a lot more about him, and I'm going to have him describe all the different things he does about, about sex trafficking, about uh, hunger, starvation, feeding people, and basically the general attitude you have to have in society, the positive attitude that you need. So it's a great pleasure to have you, Jocko. I'm a big admirer of all that you've accomplished in such a short period of time. Maybe we start with, how did this happen? How, how did you become consumed with uh, these missions? I mean, I know in one place you call it the Jocko Boyan's Ministries, and I think, you, I think you see it as a something of a vocation, like a priest or a minister in some ways. But tell us how, how it all started. Yeah, Mayor, thank you so much. You know, I've, I've learned a lot from you, and I mean that. Oh, we all you. have. <laughs> we, we just i am honored to be on the show, and thank you for, for being the patriot that you are. You've served this country, and, and I'm, I'm blessed to be on your show. Most of the things I tackle is things we've experienced in life. You know, my sister Ilonka was sex trafficked in 1994 for six years. And we were raised by a single mom, a, a loving, caring mother, a school teacher, a woman who fought for freedom through the height of apartheid era. Uh, she, she had to get her f fair share of ridicule over that time. And so just how we were raised, we were raised with God and raised that all people are equal, period. In a time when skin color really mattered in South Africa, it was a, it was a tumultuous time. And then Ilanka gets sex trafficked, and nobody called it sex trafficking back then. It, everybody thought she was a runaway. We, of course, knew our family is so tight even today that she was not. That was a tough process. So my brother and I had to learn literally firsthand driving at night, club to club and place to place, learning how to read tattoos, talk to people, talk to people on the street to try and find a sister. And she was trafficked through corporate South Africa. This wasn't a you know, a runaway, she won a contest like American Idol. How, like how, South how, African. Old, how old was she at the time, Jocko? How old she was were you? 12, she, she was 12 turning 13. She I was, was my senior. Yeah, baby. And, and that's the average age of children being trafficked in the USA is 12. The average age. Is that right? And so I was, yeah, I was, and there's a reason, Mayor, and I can tell you why. Please, I was please, 18, please educate I was 18 us. Though. I don't think Americans, I think Americans are very concerned about this, but I don't think, yeah. We know enough about it. I really, truly believe that. Is that correct? That we don't really know enough Absolutely. about it? Absolutely. I think that's right. I'll, I'll say on the top of your show here, this president, President Donald J. Trump, I fought this fight in the USA under three presidents, President Bush, President Obama, and President Trump. Not trying to disparage anybody. There's only one of those three presidents that has publicly taken a stand against Thank God. the trafficking of children, and it's President Trump. He signed the executive order. I was so blessed to be in the White House, to be invited to watch him do it. Right. But, but we have had no support 
uh, with the previous administrations, at least federally. So he is doing a phenomenal job. But the reason it's 12 year olds is because a, a predator online, if they're going to profile a girl, predominantly 97% of the victims are girls or women. Boys for sure as well, but 97% are women. There's no better time to profile a girl when she's going through puberty, when she's already confused. She doesn't understand her own body. She's not talking to her father at that point. The father figure is not playing a, a big role. You know, boys become very important. And now with, with social media and the internet, it, it's basically a buffet for a predator that's very skilled, very seasoned, to groom a child over a period of time. And, and through COVID, we've seen more grooming than ever before in history. The numbers are, are epic proportions of screen time. So when a child is engaging with a boy, let's call him Johnny, that's 14, quote unquote, but he's really a 42 year old man profiling this child. He's looking for weaknesses in this girl. He's looking, does she have father issues? Is there poverty? They're profiling them like you would build a case in, in, in the FBI or, or CIA. And when they find a soft target, they pounce. And this is with affirmation, coercion, f fraud. You know, they can bait them. They can romance them. And, and this is how it happens in our country. And unfortunately, Mayor, we're the leading nation in the world no. commercializing sex with children. We are. We are. Are we the leading nation for sex trafficking as well? No, there's, there's nations, and I'll, I'll call them out, Cambodia, the Middle East for sure, where sexual exploitation of children is more prevalent, but it's part of their culture and it's covered under their religious beliefs. So, so it's not considered you know, sex trafficking in the Middle East when they take an eight-year-old and, and marry her off to an adult, mm. but commercializing it, actually making it an industry where the leading nation in the world, it's a $30 billion industry in the U.S. per year, $30 billion. And we're talking about minors here, 12 years old is the average, right? So eight, 17 and under is a minor under federal law. But we're not that talking about a, close cases where a 17-year-old can look 18 or, or a 16-year-old can look 18. This is, a, this is, a, this is a almost prepubescent in most cases or right in the middle of puberty, right? By design, yeah. by design, because, because sex is a drug. It can be, right? And, and when there's sexual perversion, like any other drug, there's a progression. You, I mean, you don't start with an opioid and stay there. You progress. You don't start with heroin. You progress. So you start with soft pornography. You start, normally, they abuse a child in their family, and then they progress out. You know, and pornography plays, plays a huge role, and child pornography is rampant in the U.S. today. And so we're feeding... A, a, a pedophile mindset and we're normalizing it on many levels in this country, which is very dangerous. So it, the purpose of sex trafficking, is it to build up a group of young women who you're going to make money off doing pornography or being like prostitutes? It, it, or is it for your own the benefit of the person who's doing it? Or I guess all of those things, huh? It's all of them. And, and you're asking a very, very... Good question. You know, uh, Jeffrey Epstein got a lot of attention. So let's use him yes, as an that, example. Be, but what people I, will know about I, that, right? Yeah. And what I don't want the public to do is to think that it's only the upper echelon, the billionaires that are doing this. We have arrested and apprehended everything from the janitor, the school principal, the police chief, sitting U.S. state senator in Philadelphia, right? Jeffrey Epstein, the Fortune 500 CEO, or Joe, that's the football coach next door, because it's sex, there's two things in every home other than oxygen and water, sex and money. And if you pervert either one of those two, you're going to have a real problem. And we made an agreement in the 60s with sexual perversion in this country. We normalized free sex and we're paying for it dearly today. Our children are paying for it. And there's vast groups fighting for normalizing pedophilia. So I hear in that that there's a difference between us now and at some point in the past. Yes. Because, I mean, a lot of people might think that in the past it just was hidden, but now we just know more about it. But what you're telling me is it's a, it's a considerably worse condition now than it might have been Absolutely. in the past because of the bad parts of the sexual revolution, let's say. Absolutely. Let's just say if we were to normalize something like bank robbery, 
let's just say we desensitize people go you know what it's insured it's not really that bad and you start normalizing it every guy that's ever thought of robbing a bank but never did it now <laughs> goes my my risk profile just went so down. you say marginal people or people that might be inclined that way that because of social inhibitions criminal laws might never think about it. It, it it's, it's it's inside but it never comes out those people are now being are being drawn into it because of what's going Absolutely. on in society. I can see that. And we're seeing it. If you look at Antifa, for instance, right? The first second Antifa as a group saw that they could attack people, attack the police, and there wasn't immediate harsh ramifications, their numbers grew. So as soon as pedophilia now, you have to understand, pedophilia literally retracts and retraces the neuropaths in the brain. Pornography and pedophilia has a physiological and, and a psychological impact. This is not like alcohol that's a drug where you're only under its influence when you are drinking. Pedophilia actually changes your neuropath. So it's like putting flaps on a horse. You start seeing tunnel vision. You see sex. Mm. It's all you see. Your brain, your brain is releasing endorphins to meet a need. You wake up with that need, which is sexual satisfaction. You know, Jeffrey Epstein abused girls every two hours. That guy had such tunnel vision that his whole life revolved around what's my so, next hit? So I, what's the next fix? Hearing all this is kind of shocking, I must say. But uh, what, so what do you do about it? How do we how what? First of all, what do you do? And then what can we do as a society, as a country, as a city, a state? What, what, what specifically what do you do? And then how do we deal with this and turn it around? We fight. Yeah, thank you, man. We fight this fight on multiple levels. Number one, the American families, the, the parents have to understand that this is not a foreign issue. It's a domestic issue. It's in your neighborhood. It's in every neighborhood. They have to understand that the tools we use today to pacify our children are the very tools that's being used to profile them. They have to understand that this is not kidnapping. Children are being trafficked while living at home. They hide it from their parents. Absolutely, sir. Yes, sir. The cell phone. It, it, the cell phone has become the pimp. Huh. There's no need for a pimp today. You have the buyer of, the, of sex and the, and the supply chain, the child connecting directly with one another. That makes law enforcement so hard. Sure. Because you're talking about human psyche here. You can't have a canine smell, a sex traffic victim. You know, and, and children are, my sister, for instance, the second she was abused the first time, they read my mom's daily route to her. They said, we'll kill your mother. Your brother is at university here. And the second you bring fear in, the victim becomes a defender. I'm going to defend my sister. When a father comes into one sister's room at night and says, hey, this is our secret. But if you don't let me do this, I'm going to do it to your sister. It's dirty tactics, but it's psychology that works. And so we have to bring this to attention to the American family. We've got to bring fathers home, Mayor. And not just being in the house. Be present. Have real hard conversations with your children. What are they watching? Who are their friendship circles? Our situational awareness in America, I would argue, is the lowest in the world. Situational awareness of what our children are doing. And a society, you know, in the police academy, the first, the first thing they taught the police officers under you in, in, in the, an amazing, you know, New York Police Department was situational awareness. Know what's right and what's not. Can you walk into a Starbucks and identify when something's missing? Oh, absolutely. People, they're, they're, you know, and, and we don't in our families. So our kids have the wrong friends, play the wrong games, have the wrong influences, and it's hidden in plain sight. So number one, we need to bring awareness. Secondly, we're involved in, in intel and information with HSI, uh, ICE, and the FBI. I know you work and, very, very closely with all of the law enforcement agencies and give them a lot of help because they, they, need, a, they need a lot of training in this also. Because, because they're trained to see prostitution. This is not prostitution. This is manipula mental manipulation of children, which is hard, it's hard to find. Yes. Now, ICE, ICE, I'll tell you, people that say abolish ICE, they've lost their minds. That is the most prevalent agency. HSI, ICE, Homeland Security, their special response team. We couldn't do this. They keep American children safe how do daily. They, how, how, the, how, how do they? How does ICE? How does ICE do that? On the border with CBP, they do a phenomenal job identifying the foreign kid that's coming across. But what people don't know is Homeland Security and ICE is a division of Homeland Security actually keep American children safe domestically, pro because they're the most prevalent agency 
profiling sex trafficking. Now the FBI, because the president gave them the authority to do so and gave them the funding to do so, the FBI is now also very That's involved. Very but I, yeah, absolutely. That's very, very absolutely. I have to tell you, Jocko, it reminds me, you know, you relate things to your own experience. When I became mayor, we had done very little about domestic abuse. This is 1983, 1984, uh, 94, 93 and 94. And this wonderful group did a study called uh, 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 Hidden Behind Closed Doors. And basically it said a, a lot of the crime in New York goes on behind closed doors, basically with men beating children and, and, and wives and girlfriends. And they outlined all of, the, all of the pathology of it and why the police, in good faith, didn't really know how to investigate it. You know, the yeah. police would be called in. The wife would then turn on the police because she was under, under the fear of the, of the, of the abuser man. Uh, we had to do things like come up with shelters for them because they were afraid that if they turned the man in, he would know where they live and come back and get them. We had to get more restraining orders, put them in jail, get the judges to get tougher. And we had to do advertisements to get them to come forward. And we had to teach the police officers how to record these so that even if the woman wouldn't move against a man, we'd have to wait for two or three situations, but after the third situation, we could arrest them ourselves. But they had to be taught all that, because, and for a good reason. They, did, they didn't know about that. That's, I think, what you're talking about. Law enforcement has to learn something that, you know, I think many people hearing this will say, I, I never knew something like this was going on. I knew, I mean, every American knows there's a pro there are problems such as these, but I don't think they have any idea of the scope of it. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's for financial gain. One child, and look, I don't want to promote this, but I want to give you context. One child will bring a pimp 200 to $250,000 a year tax-free. Now, think about that for one second. That's the so, that, so now we're talking about the business part of it. The business side. $250,000 so, so a year? Per, per child. Now, how's, how's that? Per because of because unfortunately, as grotesque as this sounds, you can sell a pound of cocaine one time. You can sell a child ten to fifteen times a day, and people over and, and people over will and pay over. absolutely very substantial amounts of money for a, anything for a from child? anything from fifty dollars up to two thousand dollars per per experience, and depend on what it is. And it, it's so sick, Mayor, that it becomes like honestly, you could order off a buffet, like a menu. In, within a four mile radius of where you're sitting today, this, this, is the, this, is, this is the reality. I think this would be a convenient time to take a short break. A good security system makes a family feel even more secure at home. Simply Safe does just that. It creates a secure home and it's simple to operate. Simply Safe reinvented the home security industry years ago when they introduced a wireless system using Wi Fi signals instead of running wires all throughout your house. That eliminates the need and expense for an installation crew. Simply Safe delivers you a pre-tested, pre-configured set of components that are easy to install. If you can remove crack and peel tape, you can install the system in less than one hour. Three million families and counting in America rely on Simply Safe. Your doors and windows and rooms of your home will all be protected by the sensors and motion detectors. There are sound sensors and HD camera components as well. All of those parts are connected with wireless signals within your home. And once they're connected, you can activate Simply Safe's 24 7 monitoring service. All of that costs you just $14.99 a month with no contract to sign. That connects your system with the local police department for a fast response in the event of a home intrusion. It works in houses, condos, and apartments like mine. SimplySafe.com slash Rudy is the site. You'll get a 60-day money-back guarantee and a free HD camera with your purchase. Just go to SimplySafe.com slash Rudy and order it to day don't wait. Thank you. Welcome back to this really riveting interview with Jaco Boyens. What successes have you had so far that give you hope that we can we can really make we can really make a difference here? I understand the pre the president's support is important. 
I'm sure law enforcement, when you can reach them, is more than willing to cooperate. They must hate this. Absolutely. And, and under this president, law, and you know this very well, law enforcement now are able to share intel cross jurisdiction. Yes, they're being they, supported. Which, they're being supported huge. and they're being given yeah. morale under this president. They were being beaten down under the last president. But that's At, absolutely they were they were not allowed to have special task forces. Right. And we can talk a lot about you know President Obama. But now they're, they're being equipped and enabled to share intel, which is huge. But our first line of defense, Mayor, is still the, the parents. Yes, that's the first line of defense. And so we've got to arm the parents with knowledge that, hey, this is real, not to scare them, but to say, you need to respectfully wake up and understand you have to parent, educate the children. There's no reason why every freshman in high school and again, every freshman in college should not go through sex trafficking training. Every single uh, yes. child should go through that to know how they profile so that when a flag is raised, the child can say, this looks a lot like what I saw. And that's why we produced the movie Eight Days. It's Which is an excellent movie, an excellent movie. Just for, it's a tool we put in law enforcement's hands and we've, we've helped now in 56 countries, but our focus is the American child because so often we do such great work, Mayor, as Americans in the rest of the world. I'm from South Africa. I know how many missionaries flow into Africa, but I always ask, do we do missions in our own cities? Are we helping our own people? And for decades, the American child was left behind in this, no question. We did a lot of work in Cambodia, and the Philippines and Man you know, Manila and these cities. But in the US, the criminals understood. And, and this is why there's not a single drug cartel in Mexico, not one, that have not converted and also are trafficking now now children. Because, because of the money? So because of the money. Lucrative. Yeah, they, would, they lucrative. wouldn't do this, but for the fact that it's very profitable. Exactly. Because drugs are pretty profitable. Exactly. You're telling Absolutely. me this is just as profitable as drugs, if not more. It's second only to drugs by, by finance. It's surpassed illegal arms in our country. It's a real business. And, and one thing I want to mention that we really do need to do is we need better support from the judicial system, the Justice Department. And I'll tell you why. We, we had no laws on the books. You know, a, a child that was 12 years old that was trafficked, let's say, in Omaha, Nebraska in 2013, was not a victim. She was a prostitute. And so those laws needed to change. Now, in all 50 states, 17 and under, you do not need to, in a court of law, have to prove forced fraud or coercion. She or he is a victim, period. So it's dealt Even with the same as statutory rape. Exactly. They're deemed, they're deemed not to 18, be able to consent. Exactly. Uh, 18 and over, 18 and over, you've got to prove forced fraud or coercion. Now, here's your problem. The pimps are smart. They understand that, hey, if I traffic a 16-year-old, I groom her, she's going to turn 18, and the law is going to change on her. She's going to go from a victim to a prostitute. But it's not like that child can wake up one morning and all of a sudden flip a switch and go, you know what, now I'm going to be in my full faculties. I'm going to have mental clarity because I turned 18 of course, today. Of course, of course. So it's a very gray area that's exploited. It's difficult. And for that reason, a lot of our district attorneys in the country are afraid of these cases. They don't bring them to trial. They settle. They, they will take the pimp to trial because the pimp normally, normally have priors, drugs, oh, sure, guns, sure, sure, so, sure, sure, so they sure. can yeah. pin him on other worst, things. Worst element our in society. Problem, our problem in, our, in this country, and this is why what Mayor Cuomo did in New York, what makes it so devastating with the no bail, he's no bail act. I'll tell you what is the most devastating is the fact that the Johns, the buyers of sex with children. Oh, they're considered they, nonviolent. They walk. They walk oh, in my this goodness. Country. You know, they do the they same walk. thing with drug dealers. They consider Absolutely. them nonviolent. Every drug dealer I ever prosecuted had a lot of guns because they Absolutely. shoot people and they get shot. <laughs> I mean, it's so unrealistic. So what you're telling me is yeah. these, these pimps of young ch children yeah. are let out. Yes, absolutely. Because they're, well, considered in New York, be, they're considered to be a nonviolent criminal. In New York, they walk scot-free nationwide for the most part. The Johns, the guy buying, paying for the sex with the child, they walk. Which, which economics 101 teach us what? B supply meets demand. Right. So we could go after supply all day long, Mayor, but it's like move, removing an evil dictator in the Middle East. There's another one that's saying, I'm ready to step into his place. We have to go after the men in this country, predominantly men, 30 years old and over, fathers of two, 
That's your average buyer of sex with children in our country. These are fathers. We have to go after these 30, guys. 30, too. male, 30? 30, 30 plus. 30 plus. Father of two. Father of two. Why is that? Why, or, why father of two? That's just how it boils down. Yeah. That's what the economic, the demographic boils down. And, you know, general, and generally, generally, men. generally people who have some means. $100,000. On average, is the salary of the median buyer. But now think about this. The janitor that's doing this yeah, sure. can maybe afford one child a month. Jeffrey Epstein had a child every two hours. All right. So now what programs do you use? I know you do a lot, but I just would like you to outline them to get this into the minds of law enforcement, parents, the schools, the critical critical places. How do, how, what's, your, what's your sort of vision for how to how to get people aware of this so they can start acting. Yeah, it needs to be a multilateral approach. So we've aligned ourselves with 65 NGOs around the country that do work and they defend certain zip codes, such as Traffic 911 in Dallas, Texas. They only work Dallas County, right? And then we arm these NGOs. We do gap analysis. What do they need? We, we don't have every answer and, and we definitely don't see ourselves above anybody. They do great work. What do they need? They may need a curriculum to go into schools. So we wrote a curriculum. We train whole ISDs. The Irving ISD in Texas, for instance, is 40 schools that we train every single sophomore, all the teachers, all the, all the career counselors, the superintendents. We train them. Then we train the parents in a different method. And at the same time, we go to law enforcement. In 2019, I personally trained 100 FBI special agents of how to profile a child because it's very difficult to profile a child in a 7-Eleven truck stop, for instance. Now, how do you identify a child that's under sexual duress? Because no victim self-identifies, Mayor. They're fe they fear. They're indoctrinated. They don't. I've never in 25 years met a single victim that when, when rescued said, I'm a victim. Their pimp told them, you're responsible. You did this. You're not a victim. I mean, and so it's indoctrination. So then we also help writing laws. We helped four bills to write four bills last year with different states where, where detrimental decisions are made. I'll give you an example. In Oklahoma, this is a conservative state. Oklahoma, for instance, made a decision that they're going to have co-ed, fully co-ed dorm rooms on their college campuses. So now you've got boys and girls, 18-year-olds, walking into the same shower, and all of a sudden, on-campus rape shot through the roof. Of course it did. Of course. And so then we came and we had to write a law, a bill, to go to the floor that did pass that said, now we've got to train every sophomore in Oklahoma to let them know how potential predators would profile. And so we need to stop making laws that make our lives difficult. We need to enforce the laws that exist, number one. If a pedophile abuses a child, he needs to get the maximum sentence, which typically is 30 years. That guy needs to be put away because we need to raise the risk profile. It's also not, for these it's, guys. It, as I understand it, it's not curable, basically, right? There's no, there's no, um, there's no known regimen. Like, like, for example, let's take a drug addict. You're not going to cure a lot of drug addicts, but I've, I know drug addicts that have been free 30 years. A drug addict, you have at least a chance. Alcoholism, you have at least a chance. This is something where I don't I don't know of any uh, program of has any has any has has had any success with these people. Am I right about that, or I'm I just ignorant of it? You you're very well informed, Mayor. They call these John schools, John, and I hate I hate the term John because I've got friends who are called John who are good guys, but <laughs> that's what it's called. The John. He was a schools, wonderful but, saint too. He's Jesus's favorite uh, apostle. Absolutely. But, but Mayor, I've never met a pedophile in my life that was rehabilitated. I've met a yeah, lot I, of vic I, victims right. yeah. because of, of the reframing of the neuro pathways in the brain. It is. And look, if I can talk about my faith for a second, it is clear, clear description in Scripture. When you violate your temple, when it's violation of your own body, that is that is very detrimental. Yes. Sex, sex is powerful, Mayor. And so so. It, those guys don't rehabilitate. And when we allow them to walk free, like what's happening in New York, we have a real problem on our hands. Now, at the same time, we've got groups that are normalizing sex with children. There's a movement called Love is Love. It was birthed in San Francisco. Not surprising. It migrated down to Love to is Angeles. Love. 
Is the name love it? is love. And this group is currently getting signatures to try and get a bill to the floor in California to to classify pedophilia as a sexual orientation. Now, I want you to understand what happens when you do that. You are saying, just like you'd say, well, this person it decides that they want to you know, be in the LBGTQ community. We're going to classify that as a sexual orientation. So they have rights. The second you classify pedophilia as a sexual orientation, we're going to have a disaster. Who's because now you're saying who, who supports this, this guy. There's a lot of support, Mayor. A lot. To the point where like there's a curriculum. People? Which I, Do normal people support this? No, not no. It's it's the nor it's, it's the normal situation you. where one percent of society that you know the tail is wagging the, the dog at this moment. For instance, there's a curriculum called CSE, Comprehensive Sex Ed. There's a federal law in our country that protects a school or a, a an independent school district from not having to show parents the full curriculum of anything that your parent is, is studying. They don't have to show you the curriculum. They they have written this curriculum into law in 29 states, most recently the state of Washington, Inslee, Governor Inslee, again, abused, you know, promoted child abuse because this curriculum is for 10-year-olds, CSE. And I, I encourage parents, go ask in this public schools, go ask your school, do we teach the CSE curriculum? And if so, you've got to go to war. Because yeah, yeah, it yeah, absolutely. We had that. Yeah. We had, I, won't, I won't go into all the details of it. But we had a situation like this in the early 90s. That's one of the reasons, one of the things I ran against when I ran for mayor, in which parents weren't allowed to take their children out of the sexual curriculum if they didn't agree with it. And yeah. uh, I got elected and changed it. And um, thank you. I don't know, but honestly, with the present mayor, I don't know what's, what, what would be going on because he's, well, never mind. Uh, he's not exactly a good mayor. So I have to ask you now what organization? Can people find, how, how can they find you if they want to contact you and say, could you do this for my school district? Can you do this for my organization? How, 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 how do they get you? And we'll, and we'll put it, all of it up, you know, on the screen for them too. Yeah, or go train their law enforcement department. Yeah, know, yeah, any, any of that. Train law enforcement. The organization, the the organization, organization is called sharetogethernow.org. 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 And, and you're located. And we named it. In, located out of Dallas, in Texas, Dallas. but we but we work in all 50 states of the United States. We support NGOs in all 50 states. And and then you have about 65 groups that you work with. So yes. if I if and, I and, if I, and, if I and, and increasing, yeah. So if I say I'd like you to come into my school district in Long Island or something, then you you, you would find the right group, and they would come in and train people in that school district. Or because it's always organization and we come and we come in with them we come with them and we do training and it's always it's always best mayor to ask a community to defend their own community you know i don't believe that i need to go to new york and say hey new york can you don't ma donate money for us to fight sex trafficking in dallas texas now i need to go to dallas there's ownership we need to take ownership over our communities and we need to stop giving law enforcement such a hard time thinking law enforcement can fix every problem there's 365 million americans and count how much law enforcement we have. We need to become aware in our communities. And the down ballot vote has never been more important than in this situation. Something as little as voting for the PTA of your school, if you don't show up to vote and you don't show up to share your voice, your children are going to be indoctrinated with a sexual curriculum that is almost, you know, to a place where you can't return the damage that is being done. You know, when you start introducing these sexual concepts to a 10 and an eight year old, th that has massive impact mm -hmm. on their the trajectory of their future. So we have to engage. So we in empower parents. We take the feature film eight days. We don't charge for this. We show it. We screen it as a conversation starter. We bring law enforcement and the public sector together. We bring media together. And then we start programs in local communities. And then we give them the resources to fight. And how, how successful have you been where you've been able to do this? How do, you feel, how do you feel about the success that you've had? Not to toot our horn, Mayor, but very, very, yeah, I very would imagine. successful. I, mean, this, I, very. Think, I think this is one of those things like, I remember Mothers Against Drunk Driving when it first started. 
Yep. And I remember being at one of their early meetings and being absolutely just shocked by how people didn't think about if you're if you drink, you shouldn't drive because God yes. forbid you could have on your conscience for the rest of your life that you kill somebody. And and I said to myself, this is a this is a, a, a crime we can reduce because a lot of good people are falling into it without realizing the consequences of what they're doing. And it has. It's re- Mothers Against Dr- Drunk Driving has done wonderful work in saving lives. The, the, uh, the, the without same thing, The same yeah. thing with, with uh, child and domestic abuse. A lot of organizations like uh, Safe at Home and they've... Yes. It just... What, what, if, if you could teach people what to look for, you could reduce this thing dramatically because it's right, right, it's right oh, there. Mayor, no question. It's right there yes. for them to see. They just don't re- realize it. I, w- I, was, I was praying over this one day and I said, God, give me, I went on Mark Levin's show and I said, give me something that a, an American mom can take away. Because I love, I love to say, what can I do today? People go, okay, I want to help. The most powerful person in our country, the president's powerful by the law, but it's actually the soccer mom. It's the mom <laughs> that carpools. That's the most powerful person because she hears conversations. She sees other children in her car. She has a huge influence. If you equip that mother, with what to look out for and what to do when she so sees something. The soccer mom. It's powerful. It's very powerful. Used to be like the den mother when, when right. they used to have <coughs> large Boy Scout organizations. And people always ask me, you know, we, we cannot all attack the head of the giant, which is, which is Washington, D.C. I go and we attack the head of the giant. We go address Congress. We go fight at the Senate and the House. I'm not asking a mom in Shreveport, Louisiana to do that. I'm asking that mom, number one, defend your house, your home, your children, then your neighbors, then your street, then your school. You can do that. Every parent can do that. They can fight if we put the tools in their hands and we get them to a place where they realize, okay, I cannot play see no evil, hear no evil with this. Because really, Mayor, honestly, there's no gray area here. You're for child sexual abuse or you're against it. That there's no other way to right, look at this, right, you know, right. and, and once you know and you turn away now, it, it's borderline aiding and abetting, which we see a lot when you see someone like Mayor Cuomo, because trust me, he's been informed. He has been informed very well of how prevalent sex trafficking is in New York. Can I tell you that New York City? Well, why would why, the, why wouldn't uh, Governor Cuomo, who I know, why wouldn't he be? Uh, why couldn't you appeal to him on the grounds that do not let sexual people involved in sex crimes out? They're pretty it, easy. You just cross it them per, off the it list. Perplexes, it perplexes me, Mayor. And look, I, I can't say that this... Well, it's happening on his watch, so he's responsible. The buck stops Oh, absolutely. If, if, it happened, if I were so, mayor and it happened to yeah. me, it also... I mean, our, our mayor... It's, Dur- during this Bill de Blasio, Mayor de Blasio is responsible. Do you know, and this is a fact, do you know that the number one sex trafficking city of minors commercializing sex with children in the world, Mayor, is New York City? No, and I'm very, very embarrassed. In the world. I'm very embarrassed and, 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 and very, very, um, and probably feel like I wish I was. It wasn't I, three years ago. I wish it was I was. Not three years ago. I wish I was, was mayor Atlanta. again because I think. Yeah. Th- this is one of those things, I guess, because of my background in law enforcement, I can see with a good mayor, particularly because you have control of the police department, you could kind of cut this down immediately. But mayor, this look at not what hard you did. to do. I mean, no, it's, it's not, not hard, hard to do look at, if you just look at. Sh- yeah. Look at how you cleaned up Broadway. Look at what happened with Broadway. Broadway was a brothel district for years. Cleaned up Broadway. Look at what we did with crime in New York. I'll, I'm gonna give, I'll give you one crime. Uh, for example, auto theft was very big in New York because organized crime used to do it. Because we have expensive cars in New York. You can make a yes. lot of money with auto theft. We, we cut it down just in the eight years I was in office, 80%. Wow. And I think we, we, we were the first ones to do an organized effort against domestic violence. And in the first two years, the number of cases went up. But the number of cases didn't go up. The number of times we found it went up. <laughs> yes, because it was that's going right. on behind closed doors. That's and now right. we have systems to deal with that. This, this, I mean, this, this could be dealt with, and it really is best dealt with at the city, county level. The closer, Absolutely. the closer to the people Ab- the government is, the more effective Absolutely. it's going to be. With a lot of support from a governor, in 
writing the right laws rather than the wrong ones, and from the president pu pu pushing it, and the federal Look, agencies available to you for the international, because we haven't had time to do all of this, but this is a big international business too. It's like drug huge, dealing. Huge, huge. Very well, organized. Very we're organized gonna have you, and organized. We're going to have you back, Jacko, but I'm going to tell people, you know, you find out about Share Together Now, uh, .org. Go online, read about it, find out about it, and see how, and see how, how, how you can help. Uh, either help uh, with donations, if that's because that'll help them, but mostly what they want are people. They want people yes. to come to them, right? And bring situations to them, and then they can come and help you solve it. You, you can't sit by any longer and just watch this. It's become too prevalent. And the way I always feel, there are things that go on in society that you don't know about. You can't, you can't be responsible for that. But the minute you put on notice, Morally, you're now responsible for doing something. So everybody who's heard this is now morally responsible for doing something about this. And find out more about it by connecting with sharetogethernow.org and with uh, Jocko. We'll have him back because there's a lot more to this man's life than just this. Just tell me what happened with your sister. I think everyone is going to want to know that. Mayor, she, she was found uh, six years later, and my mom vowed that while she was gone, when Ilanka was found, that we were going to immigrate to the United States because we were always Nashville bound. She's a singer, oh. and they did, and they did do that. She's a recording artist in Nashville today. She's a Christian worship artist. She's a mother of two. She's healthy, but it took a decade of incredible work. And today, she fights in this fight with us. She's part of our organization. She fights with us. She goes to the bedside of children when they're rescued in the hospitals. And, and look at a girl in the face and say, I've been there. I'm with you. You're going to make it through this. Oh, my God. You know, God is good. Nothing more powerful Absolutely. than that. I remember in the Absolutely. early days of drug rehabilitation, which I used to be involved in, the most important person was the reformed drug addict. That's right. The one who could say, you know, when the drug addict would say, you don't know what I'm going through with withdrawal. You know what I'm going through. It was much more effective rather than you or me saying it. Somebody who had gone through it saying, yeah, two years ago, I went through exactly that. And you're exaggerating. <laughs> It's bad, Absolutely. but it's not as bad as you're saying it is. Yes. I, yes. I, if I got through it, you can get through it. it Absolutely. All of a sudden, you see the person. It has a different kind of impact. Yeah. It, well, it, they can relate. And, and Mayor, if I may, I know we're closing. If I may, just Please. allow me to do this because it's, it's what, what I believe God's called me to do. I want to exhort you. You, what you just did here on this, on this podcast, and I want to affirm you because I've seen this. You asked me, does it work? This podcast, no question will save lives, real lives. Well, I, want your listeners to, I want your listeners to understand how important the work what you do is. Thank you for being a, a patriot. God bless you, sir. We will pray you up. We need you in this country. Well, I need stay all healthy. the prayers I can get, Chaco. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you we'll be, we'll get, We're going to stay on this, believe me. You, well, once you, I just said, I've been a member of MAD since 1980 when I first found out about it. And I've been working on domestic abuse since 1983 when I first read behind closed doors. And I, I tell you, I, I'm sure I knew about this, but when I was in law enforcement, which sort of ended in the 90s, this wasn't, we kind of knew about it, but it wasn't really a major, a major issue on a federal level. That's right. Hopefully it's gotta be now and we'll make sure it is. Thank you, Jocko, and God bless you and your family. Thank you, Thank you you're sir. Doing, you're, you are doing God's work, it's wonderful. Well, that was an absolutely electrifying interview with a really, with a man who's doing very significant work and a man that you should find a way to get involved with and his organization. And this is a cause you should find either get involved in a big way or in some way, because this is something, you know, some of these things we may not be able to turn around, but this is something we can turn around and save an awful lot of kids. Well, thank you very much for listening and we'll be back with Rudy's Common Sense.